Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome back to OMG Muslims. So I've been doing this for a little bit of time now and over the years um, we have discussed a lot about hijab and modest clothing and different aspects of it. We have discussed it so much. There's an entire playlist so if you are interested in that it's linked above for you. As you guys well know I am a diehard fan of modest clothing for man, woman, and child alike but over the years I've gotten a lot of comments and emails and you know messages that just make me really know, made me really understand that there are a lot of misconceptions about modesty, dressing modest, and what is the purpose of it? What does it protect you from? What are the benefits of it? And so on. A lot of confusion. So today we're going to be looking at some of those common misconceptions and I'm going to be trying to give you a little bit of perspective. But before we get started guys, I just wanted to remind you, if you love somebody, let them know. And if you like the type of content that I make on this channel, please do subscribe so that you get every Thing. We talk about like a wide range of things on this channel. So if you don't just want to only get videos about hijab, you're going to need to subscribe and put them notifications on. Just saying. Let's hop right in and get to the very first misconception. And that is that it is a cultural thing. Yes, girl. I have gotten a lot of those comments. Why are you dressed like an Arab? That's Middle Eastern culture. <sighs> All right, thank you so much for letting me know. <laughs> there are a lot of people out there that think the hijab, um, which is what I'm going to refer to modest clothing as because I mean, that's the word for it, hijab. So, okay, it's the same thing. A lot of people think that hijab is a cultural thing, meaning if it's common in the place where you grew up, that's how the women dress, and then you're more likely to be okay with that and want to dress like that and be comfortable with that. And people who are born somewhere else, you know, where short shorts are the common, Thing, you know you would be more comfortable with that because it's your culture but is this the reality well short answer no <laughs> Long answer, no, and here's why. To start, I just want to read you guys this a little bit from the Quran here, and it says, O Prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the woman of the believers to draw their cloaks all over their bodies. That will, will be better, that they should be known so as not to be annoyed, and Allah is ever oft forgiving, most merciful. What I just read was one of the references to hijab in the Quran, how women are supposed to dress. How women should be covering themselves. The Quran is the guiding book for mankind and Muslims all over the world regardless of their cultural background or where they're born use it to guide their lives and as we know over a billion strong there are many Muslim women from all different places in the world and all different cultures that wear hijab and I will just briefly throw in there that it's also not just a Muslim thing it's also a Christian thing it's also a Jewish thing. All of these people were told as well to wear hijab. Culture, however, does play a role in how hijab may look from area to area. An Afghani burqa doesn't look like the same thing people wear in Qatar, nor does it look like the same thing Somali sisters wear. Like, I mean, you've got that more sleek, black look from more eastern middle eastern areas and then you've got the really beautiful pastels and just like i'm talking beautiful full pastel ensembles of our asian sisters and you've got you know the really nice bright colors and patterns and things like that of our african sisters and then we have hobo hijabi style from your american sisters and i'm sorry i have to make fun a little bit because it's saying a lot when your husband totally agrees that it's probably best that you start at least ironing your niqab before making videos. Guys, like I just don't know how to care. But yeah, Islam over culture all day every day. So yeah, you might see all kinds of styles of hijabs and different colors and different combinations and things like that. But everybody should still be trying to meet that certain set of hijab standards which were given to us by our creator. And who better to tell you how to handle your car, your washing machine, your computer, or whatever, right? The manufacturer, right? <laughs> so the Quran is our user manual, straight from the manufacturer. 
All right, on to the second misconception. Modest clothing draws attention away from you. Okay, so there are lots of people who believe that wearing modest clothing is meant to draw attention away from you, which would of course bring with it all of the comforts that come with not being the center of attention, right? Seems, seems easy enough. <laughs> but is this true? Well, long story short, can you still see me? So as many people have pointed out over the years, wearing hijab or dressing this way in a place where it is not common would draw more attention to you than if you were dressed like everybody else. And I think that's a fair observation. <laughs> I will agree that unless your burqa is somehow camouflaged to your surroundings, um, it's not gonna exactly help you disappear in a crowd. But here's the thing, I think people are really misunderstanding that there are different types of attention. I might even, dare I, dare I go there? I would even say that dressing in a certain way or dressing in modest clothing is meant to elicit a certain type of response or a certain type of attention. Like if you reference back to that Quranic verse that I read to you earlier, Allah is literally saying to dress like this so that, right, people will know some things about you, that you are a free person, meaning you're not a slave, and you're a respectable person, meaning you're not here for, you're not down for some foolery, and so that you aren't annoyed. Like you don't have to deal with annoyances like people looking at you inappropriately, um, people making comments, hitting on you, cat calling you, different annoyances like that that are very, very common. So while hijab might get you some looks, or it might not even stop 100% of men from saying, commenting, or looking. Some women do like Muslim women for all of the reasons that you would imagine. And secondly, we're awesome, Alhamdulillah, we're awesome. And then secondly, um, for some people, just knowing that you are a woman is enough, <laughs> is enough to pique their interest. So, you know, well. <laughs> like it or not, still at the end of the day, the hijab greatly reduces that kind of negative attention that we don't want. <laughs> and I think all women can kind of like understand this on some level. It's like you you know you have days, you get up, you don't want to, you know, have to make yourself look a certain way to be accepted outside and you don't want to be catcalled or annoyed today. You just want to go and you just want to get your stuff done and you just want to go home without any of all that extra stuff, you know? I think anybody, like you just wanna go get your workout in or whatever and you wanna come home and you don't wanna deal with all that extra nonsense. And even women suck. That's another thing. Like a lot of people, they talk about the men, you know, like how you're saving yourself from, from all those types of problems. But in reality, women suck a lot worse than the men do sometimes. Um, they're looking at other women's bodies and making comments and, you know, things like that work for it a little bit, dang. Next misconception, wearing hijab slows aging and protects against illness. So is this for real? Is this like a real thing? And it's a hard yes, it's, it's a hard yes. There's no yes and no, there's no maybe. It's it's a definite yes on this one. You'll be happy to know. It's, it's a pretty common knowledge that sun and sun exposure damages your skin and over time causes signs of aging to appear on your body especially as you get older and it's harder for your skin to repair itself. So what can you do about this? Nothing much. People are going to age, yes, but you will stave off the signs of aging much longer if you protect your skin versus somebody who's like, endless summer, it's going to just be me on the beach forever. Sunscreen is great. I know somebody's going to be like, you can just wear sunscreen. Sunscreen is great, but you guys have to understand sunscreen is something that doesn't, you don't just put it on and it works all day. You've got to reapply it after a certain amount of time, especially if you are busy, if it's hot and you're sweating and stuff outside. So there's no way to really guarantee the level of protection that you're getting consistently with that. On top of that, there's a lot of people who don't use it or who put it on in the morning or something and don't reapply throughout the day. So it's not really a good way to protect yourself. The best way is going to be by wearing protective clothing. And this is even more important for women than men because women have a different type of skin than men do. We just do. It's, it's due to the different types of hormones that we have in our body. It makes our skin look different. It's smoother. It's softer. 
it's more sensitive. So it's even more imperative for us that we protect ourselves and keep ourselves covered. And yes, um, regarding health, if you wear a veil, right, it is absolutely going to help you health wise. It is a barrier between you and what comes into your body, what's coming into your respiratory system. So having a barrier of some kind, having a filter of some kind is definitely better than having none. Now, obviously the protection level that you're going to get is going to depend on the type of covering that you're wearing, the type of material that's being used even a you know a thin regular niqab lightweight niqab is going to help with things like allergies and stuff like that it might save you from a few stinky smells <laughs> which is nice if you're looking for something you know more hardy to like protect you from things like um like illnesses and viruses and things like that then might i suggest a silk niqab they are very good for that and just as protective and comparable to say something like a surgical mask so just saying silk niqab so yes guys hijab can help with preventing illness and helping stave off the signs of aging all right next one guys the hijab increases your piety so is this real okay well i'm obviously a living breathing example of the fact that that is not true and the real answer is yes sort of Let's talk about that a little bit. So anything you do for the sake of Allah, you're going to, of course, get piety points for that. Anything you try to do to become closer to Allah, he's gonna, you know, become even closer to you, right? Like he's going to assist you and support you and help you with that. So of course you're gonna get some piety points anytime you try to do something for the sake of Allah. But what about people who are not Muslim who wear the hijab? Um, well, um, I've come in contact with a lot of people through this channel right? A lot of women who are choosing, and there's more and more women every single day that are choosing to wear the hijab for other reasons. Some of them are not even religious. <laughs> They're choosing to wear them for comfort, for safety, for privacy, for health reasons, right? So piety for them is not even on the table because you'd have to have like some kind of like um belief in the law in the first place, right? So piety is not something they're concerned about at all. At all. They're just after the benefits of the hijab itself, wearing the modest clothing, that's it. And on the other side of that, I just wanna mention um, that there are a lot of ways, there are a lot of deeds, there are a lot of things that you can do to increase your ranks with a lot, to be more pious, to increase your piety level or whatever, right? So doing things that he loves like charity or, or taking care of orphans and widows, fighting for the rights of children and animals and weak people among us, doing small things like not lying, staying away from backbiting, you know, for the sake of Allah. There, I mean, there might be um, women who are doing lots of things that Allah likes, right? And their, their ranks might be ranked higher than a woman who's wearing perfect hijab, even though the aforementioned woman might be struggling with hijab or struggling with some aspects of it or not doing it perfectly. But because she's doing all these other things that Allah likes, she she is ranked higher than a woman who's not doing those things, but she's wearing, you know, the perfect hijab when she goes outside. <laughs> and you know, Allah gave a woman paradise for, for like, a, gave a prostitute paradise for literally just giving a dog water, okay? So Allah is not hard to please, right? You just have to try. That's it. Like, if you just try, you will get there. That's it. It's not hard. Like, I always get... So, not annoyed, but kind of like, what? When people say like, Islam is hard, it's very difficult, it's, it's just, it's really not, it's really not. You don't ever have to do more than you can do, right? Like, you just have to do your best, that's it. Okay, final misconception. And I saved this one for last, guys, cause, oh, this is the one people love to argue about the most, like, they get so upset, okay? But the last and final misconception that we are gonna discuss briefly today is that modest clothes clothing will prevent assault. <laughs> so before getting really deep into this portion, I want to talk about a little tiny bit about modesty itself, because that I think that's a misconception in itself. I kind of probably should have put it at the beginning. What is the, what the heck is modesty? People don't understand. So modesty is not just in the way that you dress, right? It's not just the hijab, 
right? It's it's in the way that you behave. It's in the way that you think. It's in the way that you carry yourself. It's in the way that it, it's in the things that you do and the things that you don't do, right? So modesty is not just about your clothing, right? And I think that's something that you really need to understand when we're talking about essay and how to prevent it from happening and how modesty can help with that. So keep that in your mind. Um, it's not just about what you wear. There's multiple things that ha that have to be done to to get the best results. Okay. So in the past, when I've talked about things like this, I've got my fair share of women trying to shame me for having the opinions that I do, trying to shame me about my beliefs that women would be a lot more protected and the assaults and abuses that are going on against women and children, and sometimes men too, um, would be lessened by following a few sets of rules and behaving a certain way when you are outside of your home or when you're in certain types of situations. So while I won't say that dressing in modest clothing itself will protect you 100% from an assault happening to you. Obviously, if you were to go to a party with a guy you met on Tinder and get blackout drunk or high or pff, roofied and it wasn't even your fault and you didn't have anything to do with it, saying yes to any substances, right? It, it wouldn't matter if you were wearing a bikini, a burka or a bear suit you know, something st still really bad could happen to you just from being in that situation. And I told y'all before about them heels. You can't even run away. Let's talk facts, man. The average woman is going to be smaller, slower, and weaker than the average man, right? And you are further debilitating yourself by wearing constrictive outfit that you can't even get a good stride in and a pair of six inch heels. Some of y'all just be trusting these people blindly out here with your life with your actual life, okay? And and don't think anything of it until your face is on a t-shirt and people are asking for justice. And we're seeing more and more, we have all these people nowadays that are screaming, don't blame the victim, don't blame the victim, don't blame the victim. And no matter how loud you scream it, right? And, and I, and again, and I wanna just say this, no, I don't believe anybody deserves to have some crime happen to them. Right, I don't believe that. And I think that the person who does a crime, the criminal should be dealt with, okay? However, we cannot pretend that the laws are enough, that the, the laws are sufficient to protect people from this kind of things happening. Just saying it's illegal and saying that, you know, you're gonna get in trouble if you do it. Like it's just, it's not enough to protect people obviously because assaults are happening even more often than they were happening when I was a kid. They're, they're getting more ra rapid. It's happening a lot, okay? In fact, um, and this is a very sad excuse for a lot of people not to take preventative action to protect themselves. Relying on the laws is not enough to not take preventative action to protect yourself. Um, we have seen a lot of cases, even recently, in recent years, you had, there was even enough evidence to take it to court and proof, and the outcome is still not satisfactory. We all remember the case of the young man who assaulted, <laughs> assaulted, fully, <laughs> fully assaulted a young woman in an alley, outside, in, in an alley where people could see it happening. There were witnesses to this and she was completely unconscious and unresponsive. You know, even all the proof, evidence, everything, the guy only ended up getting three months, right? And, you know, in my life, I've heard stories. Um, you know, one that really comes to mind is a young lady that I, I knew growing up, we were friends, and she went through horrible abuse for for years, like just full on, like no, no, nothing, just full on abuse for years. And when it came down to it, you know, the person who abused her ended up getting counseling and she ended up having to just pick up the pieces and try to move on with her life, right? And feel like that was sufficient that he just got counseling for that. So it's not getting better and laws are, are not, you know, just saying it's illegal to do something when there's no set, right, punishment really 
right? It's still going to end up determined by the court or whoever, like how much punishment this person gets for doing what they did. So a lot of times the outcome is just not satisfactory. Not to mention all of the times where they can't even find the person who, who did it. Maybe they can't even find the person who assaulted you, right? That happens sometimes too, right? Having laws in place and, pro you know, ability to prosecute and all of that does not mean that you do not have to take steps to protect yourself and take preventative measures before something happens. And a lot of the culture nowadays really is pushing irresponsibility on women. It's saying, go wherever, do whatever, be with whoever, dress however, uh, put yourself in any kind of bad situation, and then just lean back and rely upon the law to come in and fix it if something bad happens to you. I mean, I don't see how it's worth it. I would say that it's very important to teach women how to conduct themselves and behave outside <laughs> because somebody has to apparently, they don't get it. So yeah, giving people some smart advice on how to conduct themselves, what to do, what not to do, right? Is going to help a lot more than just saying, oh, well, if anything happens, uh, we'll see if we can get this person put in jail maybe. Okay, so just to end this off, I wanna give a few um, tips on how you can help protect yourself from abuse and help protect your children from abuse. Because what a lot of people don't understand about assault of this kind, a lot of people experience it for the first time as a child, which is very, very sad. Um, because it's we're not just talking about adults going out and find themselves in bad situations or whatever the case is. We're talking about families, we're talking about children. This is like a very widespread problem. Number one is gonna be wear modest clothing. Of course, this is what we're talking about in the video. Wearing modest clothing helps. People are going to think we're human beings. When we see something, we have thoughts, okay? And when people see you, if you don't want the thoughts to be sexual or inappropriate or invasive <laughs> to your privacy, like somebody sitting and looking at your shape or your size or your this or your that or whatever, then you had better cover it up if that's not what you're looking for. And it's something easy to do. So it's not it's not like something difficult being asked of you. Um, there's a time and a place for showing off the goods and that is with your trusted partner in the privacy of your home. It is not out all over the streets for every man, woman, and child to see. And that also goes for your children. I don't understand what the lack of respect for children and their bodies is all about nowadays. Like people have made it like a joke or something to dress children obscenely and appropriately and take them out into public places for every uh, ran rando pedo to, to, to gawk at, right? Free, free, free cons, free material for all these random people outside. Like I've had situations where I've even seen sisters, Muslim sisters who have brought like their little daughters outside, you know, wearing tights or wearing bikini, a bikini to go hang out at the pool or whatever. And it's like, this is not something you would even wear you would even wear in your house like why would you put this on your little daughter and bring her outside and you can't say anything because then people say oh you're the one who's weird why are you thinking like that why are you uh people shouldn't be looking at kids like that and it's like dude i agree but people do look at kids like that they absolutely do look at kids like that right why would you put your child in that situation and why would you put out any supporting con supporting content for these kinds of people especially since they are so um, rampant in the society that we live in. You and I both know this, so why would you subject your child to that kind of attention, even at all, even a little bit? Kids deserve to have even more privacy and care than adults do, um, because they don't have the same ability to protect themselves or to get help when there's a problem, right? So they deserve to be even more, even the parents have to do even more effort to make sure that they are properly protected and taken care of. You should go out in groups. I mean, this goes without saying you should go in groups um, of two or more if you have to go someplace, especially if you're a woman. As a Muslim woman, we are required to take a marim with us when we go 
out and that's he in if at all possible if it you know if sometimes things happen but that is what's prescribed for us to take a marum anytime we go out and that is a trusted male member of our family for me that's my husband um but prior to that it was one of my brothers if you don't have that which i understand some people don't have um that kind of support then you guys need to start making those kinds of supports for yourself by um, talking to other women and maybe you know having a friend meet up with you to do your grocery shopping or to go out to get things done you know to run errands with you or if you need to go out and work out or you like to go for a run or something in the morning maybe get a partner try to find a, a sister or someone else who will be your partner in that so that you don't need to do those things alone that would be much better along with dressing appropriately and lastly, I want to tell you, um, the last tip I want to give you is to avoid free mixing. And that means male and female, keep them separate. Okay. Um, the likelihood of you getting attacked and assaulted <laughs> at a woman's only function, right, is pretty low. Like you don't have to worry about, even if there are some women with some weird intentions in their head, like you don't got to really worry about um, these kind of things happening in groups of women. In fact, if you look at the statistics, assaults are being done primarily by men. So of course, limiting the access that non-related men have to you is going to greatly decrease your chances of having to deal with an assault. And this applies to the household as well regarding children. There is a kind of woman that I really, really dislike. <laughs> and, and I'm not gonna say hate because you know, I'm hoping that things will change and women will stop being so damn selfish. But there's a woman I dislike and that's the woman who doesn't understand her responsibility towards the children that she chose to bear and birth into this world. There are women who give people who should have no access to their children, access to their children and private access to their children, which is just not, not right. The amount of kids being abused by mama's new uncle so-and-so and stepdaddy whoever and pedo bro because mom needs a relationship or whatever. Um, there are a lot of women who are letting these people that they don't know very well and haven't known for very long or whatever the case is or sometimes know that these people have back criminal background criminal histories or whatever but for whatever reason call it love call it whatever they allow these people to have unbridled access to private access to their children so they get free child care and the pedo gets free kids <laughs> these men who are not your child's father should have very little access to your children especially your females and Furthermore, they should have zero private access to your children. Like I don't understand some of you women who just been dating a guy for a few weeks or whatever and you're talking about, oh, how good he is with your daughters and treats them like your own, his own and he babysits them and watches them and takes them to places and stuff like that. It's like, are you actually nuts? Do you not know that the world, the world that you live in, have you never turned on the news? I mean, you, if you're a female, probably went through enough stuff growing up to know that that is not appropriate behavior. And there is no laws, right? Like they, they will go, maybe, maybe go after the guy once something happens, but there's very little being done about these women who put their children in harm's way daily. And, and think that that's totally okay and totally appropriate not to protect their children. Furthermore, even when we're talking about family members, um, brothers, whatever in the household or older siblings in the household or whatever, even if we're talking about siblings, okay, once your children reach a certain age and that's pretty young okay it's pretty young by the time they're three or four they already the girls have a concept of of a woman is beautiful right and girls are like this and boys have a concept of boys are strong and they're like this and they're into this stuff by that time it's already time to separate them from their beds you don't put them to bed together you don't um bathe them together all right you start dre you dress your daughters appropriately even around their brothers even around their fathers and you you keep an eye out for odd things going on there's so many cases of child abuse that i have read and like looked at and heard about in my life that i just go how does the mom not know how is she not aware and the reality is a lot of times they do know and a lot of times they are aware that something is going on and there are a lot of different 
different social economic things at play, which I will admit to that, right? Um, it's definitely harder in poorer communities and stuff like that, but it's not an excuse. You as a mother, your priority is always going to be your children first and foremost. And I think women need to be held accountable for that. There's much more that I want to talk about. Maybe we can do a deep dive into some of these a later, later on on another date because I would love to bring you guys a lot more information, a lot more facts, a lot more evidence, a lot more current stories and things like that. But for the sake of time, this video is already too long. Well, were there any misconceptions that I missed, guys? If so, let me know down below. Also, I would love to hear what your thoughts are on these topics. Are there any other ways that we could be protecting ourselves? Any other ideas that you guys have, please share those as well. Obviously, this is not a whole comprehensive list of things that you can do, but just some things I wanted to throw out there. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have made it this far, can I just ask one tiny little favor of you before you go can you please please be good to yourself today for the sake of the law with love <laughs> okay guys i will see you in the next video assalamu alaikum and have a wonderful day i'ma cut my sleep for fire before 7 a.m in the morning i'm standing no yawning I'm praying, forgive me. I'ma cut my sleep for fire before 7 a.m. in the morning. I'm standing, no yawning. I'm praying, forgive me. I'ma cut my sleep for.